This lecture promises to be extremely interesting. You'll learn how different communities, such as Rust, Go, Kotlin, and others, approach language development, how they decide on new features, and how they choose what to deprecate. We'll explore stats on the adoption of new PHP features, which was the most anticipated and hyped on the RFC stage and which was used the most. Roman spent a decade as a PHP software engineer before joining JetBrains as the product marketing manager for PHP Storm. He authors the PHP Annotated Newsletter and played a key role in launching the PHP Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, Roman Pronsky is in front of you. So, ironically, my talk is about evolution of PHP, but uh, even listening to this um, intro, I realized that my talk has evolved so much uh, and even my title has changed. I'm no longer a product marketing manager of PHP Storm. I'm now a developer advocate at JetBrains. So JetBrains pays me to work on the PHP Foundation. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the PHP Foundation and today it's more about the PHP evolution. And um, again, ironically enough, at some point I reached out to Darius, the organizer, and said, hey, um, my talk slightly changed, and by slightly I meant a lot. Uh, and he was like, okay, Roman, I trust you, your talk is going to be awesome anyway. So I wanted just to thank the organizers and uh, the crew for having me here and having this event, this opportunity for us together. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if you, anyone knows me, but I came from Ukraine, actually, like, I was born and raised in Ukraine. Uh, I now live in, in uh, Netherlands, but my country has come through a series of uh, bad events, like revolutions and war, you obviously know. And I'm not a big fan of revolutions, uh, but any evolution, if you think about it, it's a series of small, tiny revolutions. Uh, if you zoom in, so before we like zoom in on what what would this should these tiny little revolutions in PHP should be, let's maybe zoom out and think about like the the overall picture. So this is the timeline of uh, how the languages evolved, and uh, I was looking at it and I was trying to like understand what was happening. So first, um, languages they were more like scientific languages. They were uh, developed usually in uh, some kind of universities by scientists and um, uh, used there. Maybe some of them were adopted, like COBOL, I, I believe it's still alive. Uh, but what happened next is that hardware changed, the industry grew dramatically, and the languages changed as well. And then we, when the PHP appeared, that was the era of web. That was the PHP's you know, thing. Um, maybe later we have uh, some niche languages like mobile and uh, I don't know what's what's core or what's closures um, niche. It's kind of tooling, uh, I believe. The next thing probably will be AI. I don't know if you saw the spec lang. It's something that GitHub announced. It's basically a language for um, AI Basically, you write queries and AI gives you programs, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, we talk about the evolution. So the first languages, they were a bit simple, and then um, the complexity of languages grew. And at some point, there was an Algol 68, and the language was so complex, like it had literally everything you could imagine in, in uh, programming languages. And it was so complex that for some time there were no even implementations of that language. So just imagine, so these scientists, they developed the language. Uh, the spec was brilliant. They were super happy, but engineers started implementing that and they couldn't. <laughs> um, so after that, languages actually started to become more simple. Uh, and languages were removing features, not adding them. We'll see how it goes next, maybe we don't know. But what is the reason for this change b besides this industry thing, the hardware? It, and the reason is market demand. So market demands different things from 
the languages. Um, and if you think about PHP, in 1995, it was a tool for a C developer who was, he didn't want to write web with C. So he wrote PHP for himself. And uh, funnily enough, everyone needed that. So it exploded, that's why the PHP back then, but I mean, there were many um, other reasons for PHP's success. We, don't, we will not go into that right now, but what I'm trying to say is that currently the market demand has changed and we now have, we have a different situation. We have many competitors which are really good. They have really nice features. And if you want uh, our PHP to be um, still like interesting to developers, to the industry, to the businesses, we should think about what, what, how it could be different, what l features we should add, what features maybe we should not add. And these questions, like what features to add or what features not to add, this is exactly what product marketing, product management is uh, doing. And um, I'm not a product management ex expert and also product management is not a, like a science, so there are no like rules like do this or add this feature and your product will be successful. No, this is not true. So they kind of know what you should not do. Like if you do this, you're like 100% guarantees you, you got a failure. But uh, in general, it's not a science, it's just uh, some recommendations. But what they can do is that they provide you with some sort of um, a tooling, like ideas or strategies, w which you can, tactics, which you can apply to your product, uh, and maybe it will help you. Um. <clears throat> so, let's say we want to maybe think about what we, what we want to add to PHP. Um, uh, on one hand, we maybe want something very simple like this uh, kitchen knife, but uh, it doesn't solve everything, right? So we start adding more features and then we have something super complex, as I said, maybe like an algal. So we kind of want something in the between. Otherwise, our PHP may become like this. And of course, of course, it's an in in immortal creature. It will never die, but it also, sh the, it existing, Existence shouldn't be miserable, you know? We should be happy <laughs> using PHP. Um, so you may be wondering, why don't we just ask users, like, hey, what do you want? And we'll build this for you. Why don't internals do that? Um, so the product, market, uh, product management, uh, actually they have this whole book about this, which is called Mom Test. So um, the, the name comes from this, um, the, the concept that if you ask your um, users, of not, not your users, if you have some idea, some product or service, and you ask your friend or your mom uh, what they think about it, most likely they, they want to be supportive, uh, they want to be nice to you, and they will not probably criticize you. Uh, but also this book like explores how you should actually ask your users so that their feedback is valuable. Um, basically, the, these are the problems that they list there. It's, it's different kind of biases that you may have. Uh, and the, but the main concept is that uh, your questions should not be direct. It should be more about the problems that users have, how they solved it, uh, how they use different tools. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do today. And um, the example of that, like, do you want generics in PHP? I think um, most of, if you like, ask this question on the internet, everyone will, yes, of course, in generics, this is the most wanted feature. But let me, like, frame it in another way. What if it comes with 10% perf uh, performance overhead? Will you still want them? And what I'm trying to say is that any, any language decision is a trade-off. It always comes with pros and cons. So sometimes you want it, sometimes you, you don't need them. So let's, let's think about, for example, your code could be clever or readable. So this is an example of, what do you think it's doing, by the way? Does anyone can grasp what the code is doing? Can you see it? No ideas? Okay, you can get elephant if you answer. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, show you the equivalent. Can you like tell what it's doing now? Is th the same code. Uh, I mean, it basically returns you, uh, it has an array and then it returns you a square, a sum of squares of these items from this array. It does the same thing, but on the left it uses a reduce and map and then it's just a, a, a loop. And uh, it's not the, the, the example, it's not random. So Golang, it, it consciously, they consciously decided not to add map, filter, and other uh, functions because they're too, m too complex. You don't understand them if you just look at them. It's easier to just write a loop. So, th I mean, there are packages for Golang that implement these functions, but uh, in the core, they consciously decided not to add them. Then there's always powerfulness versus uh, speed. Um, the other example is uh, shiny new things and good old. And this is, um, I'm, I'm not like, in previous example, you obviously maybe could feel where, which side I am, I'm, and I am on. But here, I'm not even sure myself. So recently there was this RFC about um, default method implementations in um, interfaces, and it was declined. Mm, and currently, what we can do right now is have, have this interface and have a trait that implements this. And this, like the, the concept that interfaces are just uh, signatures, is something so deep in our minds that we are like, is it like even allowed for interfaces to have default implementations? So sometimes you have to like just open your mind and think about it differently because some languages do have that. And then, last but not least, uh, something like completely groundbreaking or backward compatible. Uh, and here, maybe um, generics is also one of the um, ideas. Maybe erase generics is something that we could uh, actually have um, without breaking compatibility and still keeping it fast. Um, so let's let's try to apply this product management ta tactics to PHP. Um, and first thing, let's analyze what these competitors that I mentioned uh, on the first slide, uh, or one of the first slides, uh, are doing. And uh, we'll use these tools, these languages. And I mean, there are so many things that they are doing differently. Some of them I don't like, some of them I like. Uh, and it, like going through a complete analysis would be a lot of time. So we'll just take one super cool thing that I liked, and then you can maybe explore. So let's take Rust. Um, what Rust has is uh, the official tool chain. So they have this uh, Rust up um, tool that you can download, and it's available for any platform. And it has everything for you. Like you can install any version of Rust on your machine or whatever, and even you can install better versions. You ca you have uh, like their cargo itself, like a composer built in and everything. Why don't PHP can? Why don't we have that? I mean, it would be nice if you could have all in uh, one out of the box. So let's take another example, uh, Go, and this is interesting one. So a Go is, uh, uh, sometimes they say that it's young language, it's not that young, but it's definitely younger than PHP. But what they do is they promise a full backward compatibility. Like they say that the program that you wrote on uh, Go 1, actually not 1, but 1.1, .1, uh, if you wrote program on 1.1, .1, Go 1 1.1, it will run on Go 2, even that Go 2 is, has not even released. So they, they have this full backward compatibility. They, they almost never have deprecations. Um, and for, I don't know, like how many of you upgrade to the new, ver new versions of PHP regularly, but uh, PHP is not, it's not like a new language. Still, it's not a stable language, you see, because, and it's, it's somewhat uh, confusing. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's not shiny new when it's all dynamic, new things coming here and there, but um, 
these deprecations sometimes can be sometimes can can be annoying. Um, let's take another one, Kotlin. So here, uh, Kotlin, uh, and I'm I might be biased because I work at JetBrains and Kotlin was developed at JetBrains, so I'm not gonna go to, through all of the changes uh, or all of the nice things that Kotlin has. But again. Um, PHP community is amazing. I don't know if you follow, but there was this uh, drama about unfinalized. So uh, th someone created a package that just removes final from uh, vendor uh, deers, and uh, Kotlin has classes final by default. This is how you extend classes in Kotlin, and they are final by default. This is, uh, for, for those people who, do, who wrote this package, this is probably like, oh my god, what are you doing? But on, on the other hand, you can extend classes with extensions. What this means is like, uh, you can think about it, I don't know if you use a Laravel framework, but they have this macro says, so you can basically add function to any class, and that's what they have out of the box. So you, you have your class, and you can add any method to it, and like in your application, and this method will be available everywhere. Um, so again, it is, this is something really uncomfortable for a PHP developer. You're like, uh, is it good, is it not? I, I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is that we as a community should be thinking a little bit differently. We should be open to um, different concepts. And um, last but not least, JavaScript. Again, too many things there, but I took one. It's um, Node, Node.js stability index. So uh, it may be related to deprecations, but what they have is they have experimental features. So when they introduce something new, it's first introduced as an experimental feature with the stability one. Uh, yeah, one. Um, and then if you use this feature, yeah, it, it's fine, but it, it's your problem because we may change it. Um, and it's really good because it's really, really hard to mm, come up with something really uh, good design uh, out of the box, like uh, from the first version. Even Enums, for example. Enums was the, like Larry and Ilya who, were, who developed uh, Enums in PHP. They did research of, through all the languages. Like research took them a lot of time. And the, 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 the specification of Enums in PHP was just perfect. But then uh, users came and they started <laughs> using Enums. <laughs> and turned out there are many edge cases, many things that are missing. And they now that they have like problems, they, they cannot change what's already there because Enums are already stable right away. So this is one thing that JavaScript does differently and I really like it. What else we can do? Um, telemetry. So uh, theoretically, uh, we could maybe somehow um, gather information from on how users actually use PHP f certain PHP features and then analyze it and do something about it. But it's uh, it's somewhat gray area. So I don't know if you know this uh, uh, yeah um, quote that if it's something if something is free, then probably they're selling your data. Uh, maybe with open source project, it's not true, but we have this example. So Go, they actually have telemetry. Um, it's really, you can, I mean, Go is open source. You can go check what they're sending, but they have it opt-in. Uh, means that if you want it to be disabled, you have to go and disable it manually. Um, but they, uh, on the other hand, they wrote a really nice specification. So if you want to implement telemetry in your tool, or, or programming language, you can check their specification. It's quite generic. Um, Rust had it as well, but they removed it. And they removed it because they, they said that we are not really using it. Um, JavaScript, I don't know. I'm maybe um, the V8 engine has something. I, I haven't checked like all the sources, like quick Googling didn't find, uh, I couldn't find anything with JavaScript, but Next.js is a, it's a popular uh, JavaScript framework. They have this telemetry. Um, and uh, what about PHP? Can PHP have something like that? Um, the answer is no, of course not. <laughs> not in the language, it's, it's absolutely unrealistic. But it could be in the composer. Theoretically, it could be a composer plugin 
that if you want, you can install and it sends uh, the data about your project and the data is anonymized and it's open source um, and maybe public. It could be interesting. Uh, of course, no one, not everyone will add it. It, of course, should be disabled by default, but could be interesting. Okay, but uh, what's the other? But we have like all public data on GitHub and different open source projects. Can we take a look at what people are using there? Um, so yeah, I was wondering about this. And I was uh, with in PHP Foundation, and I'm gonna talk about this more uh, tomorrow. Like what, what's coming there, um, what features developers are working on, and what they gonna work next year. So tomorrow, come on that talk. But today is uh, uh, I, I wanted to show you the data that we have um, for some of the PHP 8 features added in recent years. Um, and how how did I do that? So there is this tool called Source Graph. It basically allows you to search um, using regex uh, through open source projects. Um, and um, yeah, so you can see that I used PHP files, all PHP files, and those that were up updated at least during the last three years. So in this example, I'm using um, allow dynamic properties um, attribute but we'll see other um, examples. And um, what is the number? Like, can we um, trust this data? So what I did is um, the source graph, it analyzes approximately, with this filter, it analyzes approximately four and a half thousand. But what I did also, we have this inter internal JetBrains tool, which does pretty much the same, but uh, has a lot more data. So I did the same. And on the next slides, you'll see that the data is different. So if we take top projects, then usage of some features will be different. Let's take a look. So uh, for example, how many projects use enums? Um, so this is JetBrains data. So yeah, of course, in 2022, no one used it. And now 3%, someone uses it. But if we take top projects, like smaller data with source graph, then we see that it's much more. So the top projects use it more. And it's this pattern, it's, it will be repeated, but let's take a look. Read-only, so we have this read-only classes, read-only um, properties. Does anyone use them? Um, yeah, it's quite popular and you see that it's very popular in uh, top projects. Never return type, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's our, no one uses it almost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some open source projects like top project, uh, yeah, they use it, but not that much. But it's not the winner. Who do you think, what is, do you think is the like least used feature in this list? Um, any clues? Okay, it's fibers. <laughs> I believe it's literally two projects. <laughs> and then th my question is, um, and there were so many actually, I don't know if you remember, but there were so many rants and uh, discussions about fibers. Did it, like, was it all worth? The, I don't know, and maybe the, the interpretation of this uh, data is also an interesting question. Maybe, yeah, maybe some projects use it, but maybe we then use this project uh, and then it's kind of um, implicit. Interesting um, thought. So return type will change. This was the first uh, core attribute. Uh, it was added because to, to kind of keep the backward compatibility. Uh, if your uh, return type changed, like if you added a uh, type hint. Um, so the you can see the difference is drastic here. Allow dynamic properties. There was a lot of um, discussions about deprecating dynamic properties, but actually if we check the data, no one actually, I mean, not no one, but it's very few projects, and I believe, again, it's distributed. It's like WordPress, Moodle, and some other uh, projects that have 
a lot of uh, this legacy with them. But attributes, this is one of the most successful uh, features. It's like it, it's used everywhere, you may, you may say. And uh, so we can say that this is one of the best features with uh, this data. And um, we see that many projects will um, deprecate uh, PHP docs completely, like Doctrine, for example, and Symfony, um, and then we'll see even more usage. No safe operator. Mm. That's interesting. I don't know how to interpret it, interpret this data, but it's interesting. So, now this is interesting. Um, so we can see that, like, in uh, if we take the big uh, uh, data, the big corpus, not many people use generics. And here, uh, I didn't show it, but I used the, the I'm searching for template uh, annotation, uh, and I'm using uh, a template, and then some template, and then PHP template, basically to try catch everything. But the top projects, yeah, they use it a lot. So, yeah. Okay, match expression. Again, somewhat similar, but um, it's quite new, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Now, this one I think is the most successful uh, as well as the um, attributes. Or used feature we see it um, on the data. Okay, so this function, it's a very simple thing. So it just uh, checks if a certain string contains uh, a word, for example, just other string. Uh, and we see that it's quite used. But is this like 18%? Is this a lot? What do you think? So uh, again, th this, this is the most <laughs> asked question on uh, Stack Overflow. It has uh, 6 million views and it's counting like it's it continues to be the most uh, asked question. And if we check which one of these is used more, because they, they are equivalent. This basically, uh, in old times, before this function, you would use uh, stir post. Now you can use uh, stir contains. And we see that 60% of projects still use the stir post. They could upgrade. I don't know. Um, so another tool that we can use here, just brainstorm. Just try to think what we can add features we need. But before that, uh, I wanted to ask maybe we don't need some features. For example, generics. Like, I, I, when, I'm, I'm, when people say we need generics, I'm always like, but do you use them now? Do you use uh, generics with uh, PHP uh, doc uh, already? Because you already have everything to use generics in PHP. You have static analyzers, you have uh, a really nice uh, documentation about it, a lot of examples, everything, and even support in PHP Storm. Like it's it's already there. You have everything for generics. Um, I don't know. We'll see. And one thing that um, actually Dave and I came up with is uh, having generics in uh, attributes. So what I don't like with generics now is that I, if I use attributes and generics, I, I have this. I have both, like I have PHP doc and I have attributes. It looks a little bit ugly, I, I mean. So I wish maybe we could have uh, this kind of syntax. And this actually, since it's just an attribute, is backward compatible. Uh, it's very easy to implement. So yeah, you can check my blog post. I wrote more about it. Another thing, it's, it's a bit random, but I saw a tweet by Nuno Maduro, is uh, maybe we could remove dollar sign from variables. Now we're gonna happen in PHP, forget about it, but do we actually need to think about it? Another option that we could um, maybe, when we evaluate a certain feature, is maybe we just need it in the editor. We don't need it in the code. It could be just an editor feature. And here I show how uh, you can do it in PHP Storm. So this is, this is real stuff. It's a plugin that you can install and it just folds the uh, properties usages, yeah, you can, it will loop, I believe. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, so it's just it's a real property, but it's uh, it's folded. So I use a hotkey just to unfold it. Uh, so if you maybe if you don't if you don't like uh, these dollar sign variables in your editor, just you can just install folder and you will not see them. <laughs> so let me share you my wish list, like features that I personally would like to see. And first uh, is core PHP packages. Basically, uh, um, there are many things that can be available out of the box in PHP. The, currently, there is no way to ship it. Uh, technically, there is a way. You could actually pre-compile uh, the PHP code into um, uh, the op, op codes, op cache, and then ship it with PHP. Technically, this is possible, but uh, no one really explored it yet. And uh, I would love to see Composer built in and Static Analyzer built in. Then we could really, really uh, focus on different things. Like if we have Static Analyzer built in, then we really don't need to think about generics anymore in runtime. They, because it's already there, everyone could use it. Um, optional runtime type checks. This is something uh, I would like to see. I can understand if you would not agree with me, um, but runtime checks, they kind of have a performance penalty. So if you have a, a big code that is heavily typed, uh, if you disable runtime checks, you can actually get a little bit of a performance boost. But it's um, arguable. Another one is working with strings uh, and other stuff. So currently, uh, if you like UDF is everywhere, and if you want to check the length of the string, uh, yeah, you have to use this graphem strlen. Of course, you can use a string package from Symfony or from um, uh, Laravel, but maybe, I mean, I definitely think it should be available out of the box. Bundled extensions. And I don't know if you know Swool. It's a brilliant extension. It has everything. It even hooks your I.O. So uh, I don't know if you can see in this example the file get contents. It's a blocking function in PHP. But Swool hooks it and makes it uh, asynchronous for you. Zero code changes. It's asynchronous. Uh, the other one is uh, Scalar Object. It's something built by Nikita a long time ago. I'm not sure why it's not. It's never like got popular, but what it allows you is uh, to write um, object wrappers around uh, scalar, um, scalar types. I think that would allow us to kind of um, standardize the library, make it more beautiful, but yeah. Um, Build-in debugger. Uh, this is my personal pain <laughs> when I work at PHP Storm. Uh, we had a lot of complaints from user how to configure xdebug. And uh, the, the fact, like, this is the statistics from our survey. And for PHP, it's like 70% people are not using debugger and 30% using. For other languages, Java or, uh, I don't know, Ruby, it's vice versa. So 70% using debugger and 30% using functions. And this is, I mean, it's deb debugger is so good. It saves so much time. Uh, I wish it was just available out of the box. Um, again, something just for myself, local read-only variables. You can think about it like a, a local constants in JavaScript, but in t PHP terms, a local uh, read-only locals is more of a correct term. And backtick for strings, again, some my pain. I just don't like eval and the fact that you use backticks for eval, pff, insane. Uh, should be just strings. Last, these experimental features that we already mentioned uh, before. Okay, so uh, now it's a call to action. How to, you know, help with all of this? First, you can join discussions. So my colleague Brent uh, built this um, a website where you can uh, talk about, um, uh, discuss different RFCs. And currently, this one is in discussion, it's property hooks. It's uh, basically a replacement for setters and getters. Really fancy. You can see that uh, some people like it, some not. You can go check uh, pros and cons and tell us what you think. And I prepared a survey. So this, I encourage you to go and um, take this survey. You can, I'll, 
if you take it and you leave your email, you can win the elephant. Uh, but this survey, it's not the usual survey. The questions are formulated in this uh, sort of, according to this book, mom test that I mentioned. So they are more open, uh, more difficult to answer. They take time to reflect and think about, but the results are also will be more valuable than just, you know, these check boxes. Uh, so that was me. Uh, if we have time for questions, let's do it. Yes, please. Um. Well. You hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, cool. So my question is like you showed this uh, telemetry. Yeah. And I have a question like, does Jet JetBrains in the ID do some kind of telemetry? How? Like what the functions of the code are used, like I cannot answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, mm, we, we do have telemetry for uh, IDE features. Um, and it's, uh, it's turned on by default for EAP. So if uh, you download this EAP version, like beta version of PHPStorm, it's turned on by default. For a stable version, it's turned off. You should go and enable. Yeah, we have this data for PHP features or for uh, IDE features. Mm -hmm. But for language features, we don't collect it for PHP. <laughs> for other languages, I cannot answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have a question about the PHP Foundation. And uh, so currently, PHP Foundation has six members, core members. And that was in September, kind of extension. And I've, I wonder if it's, do you have any roadmap for the evolution of PHP? Uh, what, sorry? Roadmap. Oh, roadmap. Yeah, um, this is something I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, a quick answer is uh, yes, we plan extension. There are going to be four more developers uh, coming next year. Uh, but our aim is not to like grow and have billions of developers. No, it's, uh, we need like a, a team that is focused, that we trust, that we can do things. Roadmap is a very, very good thing. This is part of this uh, work, the research I'm doing. Like we, we need to shape the uh, roadmap. We currently don't have it. And I, I hope we can have something next year maybe. That's why we introduced advisory board. Uh, that's why we're doing surveys. I'm doing like this, all this research with data. So this is all the part of trying to come up with the roadmap. It's working, yeah, great. Uh, I really love the idea of PHP core packages. So my only answer is what can I personally do to put it this into the core? Disclaimer, I have a working C knowledge, so maybe. Um, that's a good question. I think, uh, um, I think r raising like uh, awareness of it, like basically talking about it, writing blog posts, writing, talking to your colleagues about it, just messaging on uh, internals mailing list could also help. It will just show the, the developers that, hey, there is a need for that. But if no one asks that, it's, it's, it's harder to justify, you know? So because everyone is asking for uh, generics and then they know that we, we even, for, for a long time at PHP Foundation, we were like, no, generics, it's too complicated. We're not going to touch it. Nikita already tried. Yeah. It's good enough to, you know, stop on this point. Uh, and again, this is something I'm going to talk about tomorrow, but uh, there is a work going on with generics. Maybe there will be something, I don't know yet, but there is a, uh, Arno continues research on generics. We have some results there. Maybe it's coming at some uh, capacity. Uh, but again, generics, everyone asks about it. With core packages, I never saw a, a blog post about it. I never saw anyone, you know, writing about it on Twitter. So just ask, at least. Okay, so basically some, some marketing campaign for that, I presume. Yeah, yeah, yeah just ask, you know. Ah, uh, okay. Or you can even open an issue on PHP SRC. They're going to close it for, of course. But then if, some, if no one asks, then it's really hard to justify. Okay, thank you. Uh, the graphs you had, uh, which showed the usage of each of the features, could you do another bar chart that's how much um, Q 
communication there was about it on internals, you know, like the, or how much aggro there was on internals. Um, <laughs> uh, funnily enough, I have a tool that uh, can actually predict how voting will go. <laughs> so what I did is I grabbed all the uh, RFC data, uh, all the votings about, uh, with people, and now what I can do is I can take new RFC, feed it, and it will tell me what will be the result. Because people <laughs> vote more or less the same. They, they, it's, it's so predictable. So yeah, it's interesting to have this discussion thing and to compare because if this never type or fibers, they were so uh, like hyped, all the Twitter was just Rah! and then at the end, no one uses it. Uh, why you don't use Visual Studio Code for your examples? <laughs> uh, no, it was PHP Storm. <laughs> I think uh, we are uh, out of time. So if you have any questions about this topic, uh, find me in there and please uh, join tomorrow for PHP Foundation talk.